This now is a really important subject. Research tells us that almost two out of every three Australian adults are overweight or obese. Wow. So no surprise then that diets and weight loss surgery are on the increase. Not only that, our children are suffering too, with mm. one in four kids reported to be overweight or obese. This is a massive concern. Yeah, and that's on the rise too. So joining us today to help us find out why obesity has become such a problem is leading obesity expert and author, Dr Nick Fuller. Welcome, Dr Nick. Thank you very much for having me on. Why is it such a problem seemingly in the last handful of years in mm. Australia? Well, this is now the greatest health policy challenge of our time. Mm. Uh, as you alluded to, it's only getting worse and worse. Two in three people are now struggling with their weight and one in four children are diagnosed with obesity. Mm. And that's not just being bigger, that's being, it's a, it's a detriment to the health of obesity. Is. That's right. I mean, if, unless someone does something about that excess weight they're carrying, it will, will, it will result in developing other lifestyle diseases like heart disease and type 2 diabetes. So who is most affected? So, unfortunately, 70% of the population are affected, so we all are. Uh. But it's the young people that are most affected at the moment and, and specifically young females. Really? These are the ones that are often, you know, having body image issues. They're getting in this perpetual dieting cycle. They're looking to the di next diet that hits the shelves as the answer to their problems. We as a nation are, are trying four to five diets every year. Really? And weight loss has become a cultural obsession. And you have written a book on this based on scientific research. So. How does this work and how can we avoid that yo-yo? Well, we've been lucky enough to, at the RPA hospital and Sydney University, trial and test all of these different diets. But we were sadly finding the same thing every time. People would lose. There's no doubt you can lose weight when you follow a diet. But then they would go back to where they started and they'd often put on a kilo or two kilos extra each time to prepare, prepare for that next bout of starvation right. or dieting. So they were dieting themselves fatter and fatter. And we as a nation are doing that. Diets are contributing to the very thing that they proclaim to cure obesity. So they're actually making us fatter and yes. fatter over time. But what we did find was something that worked and that was the interval weight loss approach. So you got a person to lose a small amount of weight, about two to three kilograms over a month, but then they had to maintain that weight every second month. And that prevented that usual response to weight loss that we get. Yeah, so you right. didn't get the decrease wow. in metabolism. You don't get the increase or change in appetite hormones. So people can lose weight, but importantly, keep it off. That's what Makes we want to do. Consistent. It's much better to, to lose 10, 12 over a year, yep. keep that off forever, yes. than what it is to lose 10 or 12 in a month and then put 12 or 14 back on. Absolutely. Right, Doc, we must delve into that more deeply. In fact, if people want to grab a copy of your book, it's in stores now. We've got seven copies to give away. If you'd like more info, head to our website, Interval Weight Loss. Look for that at houseofwellness.com.au. Seven copies can be snapped up. Nice to see you. Appreciate your time today.